Poppets take two. I did a video a couple weeks ago about poppets where I painted on them. It was a massive fail, and voila. But I didn't want to give up on poppets quite yet. I need to do it some justice, so today I'm trying poppets again. But this time, I'm making my own poppets. DIY poppets. They're super easy to make, and mostly with materials that I already had at home. I've already tried and tested them, so I won't fail on camera. So I won't let you down this time. Unless you're expecting... Evil. Poppets. In which case, you might be slightly disappointed. I just... I don't know. I don't have an excuse. I just kind of went with the flow and the flow led me here. They're more silly rather than evil, which is okay. I like silly. For each of these poppets, I did a different method. I just wanted to give you guys options in case you wanted to try them at home. For the first kind of poppet, you'll need some gum or cough drops or whatever. As long as they come in this kind of packaging with the push out bubbly things, these things. You've seen these before. I know you have. You want to eat all the gum? I had one piece left, so I'm just going to eat it now. Yum. Minty fresh. And then there's this little plastic on the back. I just peeled that right off. All I care about is the bubbles. Nothing else matters. I love you. Except for honey bunches of oats, which is why I have a giant family-sized box of them. I took out the cereal so we could use the box. You want cardboard, but not super thick cardboard. It needs to be very thin, very flimsy and bendable. I cut two big giant rectangles out of the box. I needed two sides, so that's why. I then traced the bubble thing onto the cardboard just to get a rough idea of how big I want my character to be. After tracing the gum bubbles onto there, I started sketching out my first poppet. This one's going to be a very, very happy cow. And the bubbles are going to be his... 8-pack. Needless to say, he's been working out. This cow doesn't skip ab day. Moo. After I was happy with the way he was looking, I cut out two pieces of cardboard in the shape of the cow. I then used an X-Acto knife to cut out the rectangle where his abs are going to be displayed. I made the rectangle a little smaller than what I had traced. I tried to make the bubbles a cozy fit so the edges could be glued shut between the two layers of cardboard. After that, I glued the abs shut between the two pieces using some hot glue. And then I just touched up around the edges of the cow a little bit, trying to be as neat as possible. I take pride in my work. Not that I'm proud of all of it, but you know, some of it. It's a learning process. Just don't watch the last Poppet video. I was having a rough week with that one. I sanded around his edges a little bit just to kind of smooth him out. The cardboard's not perfect, but it's what I had lying around and it serves the purpose, so I can't complain. I'm just painting my cow now. It's a standard, run-of-the-milk cow, white with black polka dots. Nothing unusual here. Moo. I did give him some personality though. He's having an amusing time. It kinda looks like his nose and mouth are a little emoji smiley face. That's not what I intended. I added a little tongue to it in an attempt to make it look a little less like an emoji. I really don't know if I succeeded in that. You can be the judge. Anyways, so on to my next sparkle butt pop it. There are one or two people who are always challenging me to make something cute. I'm slightly confused because my characters are meant to be cute. Meant to be cute. But like in a creepy way, creepy cute. That's what I always try to go for, at least. They're not meant to be ugly. <laughs> really not meant to be scary, either. More just funny and creepy cute and quirky. Things that make me laugh. I guess they might have meant for me to make something not evil. So I hope they're watching this video and admiring these tame sparkle buttish poppets. This one's for you. So this one's going to be a cute, chubby little frog having an existential crisis. In order to make that, I used a Cheerio box. No other box will do. You need a Cheerio box. Because if you don't eat the Cheerios inside, you won't be in the right mindset to make this poppet. 
it. So I cut out two rectangles again and I drew the outline of my frog. The first step is basically the same, but you don't need gum bubbles for this one so it's a little different. I cut out one frog and then I traced it onto the cardboard and then I cut that out too. I just found it's easier to cut this way rather than trying to cut two at once. I then started painting him a dark green. I thought it looked too dark on camera so I went with a lighter green instead. I painted both sides of the frog, the front and the back, in the same green and then I set them aside. We'll come back to that. Patience, Padawan. I had some foam paper, so I'm using that for this poppet. Since mine is white, it kinda looks like normal paper, but it's not. It's foam paper. Do not try this with normal paper. I don't know what'll happen if you do, but I can't recommend it. Don't do it. You also want a little circle. It could be anything. I have a roll of tape. And you also need a little ball that fits into that little circle. I just made a little ball out of epoxy since I have a ton of it, but you can use a little marble or any other kind of sphere. And then here's where things got a little heated. I pulled out a hair straightener. Yes, I stole this from my girlfriend. It's her backup straightener that she never really uses. She likes to keep a second one on hand in case her first one ever breaks down for whatever reason. I guess she's prepared for anything life throws at her. If you're new here and you don't want me to practice my straightening skills on you, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. So you want to take the hair straightener and melt the foam paper. It only takes like a second. Really don't have to hold it on there for long, just need to get it a bit hot. It works better if you turn the hair straightener on. So while the foam paper is warm, I just put the tape dispenser on top and the little ball underneath and press down to make a little snurple. I made four bubbles, mostly because I wanted to double each one up. I feel like it gives a better pop that way. I'm all about that pop. The bubbles are meant to be the existential crisis frog's eyeballs. I cut out two holes for where his eyeballs are going to go and then glued in the bubbles. After that I glued his back on and sealed in the eye bubbles. Now I can kinda just have fun drawing out the frog, fleshing out the rest of him. Like I said, he's just kinda sitting there, just thinking about something, having an existential crisis. If you haven't had one, you wouldn't know. I drew his feet, but they kinda looked too much like fins, so scratch that. I added some webbing between his feet, and now they still look like fins. But it's a frog, I promise. I drew on his little eyes, and then I was ready to poke him out. This poppet is the most intensive of the three. My hand got quite the workout. I suggest doing some Zumba before this one just to warm up. Trust me, you're gonna need it. Don't come crying to me when your hand is sore. You can't say I didn't warn you. So, um, I ran out of boxes that I could empty out. I wasn't allowed to use the Pop-Tart box. Apparently I've reached my box quota. I didn't even know I had one. But that's okay because Mama didn't raise no quitter. It's fine because you don't really need a food box. I just used poster paper for this last one. It works just as well. Honestly feel like I should have just used poster paper for all three of them. But it's too late now. I was naive back then. I'm just cutting this purple poster in half. I needed two big pieces, which is a pretty consistent theme throughout this video. And then I pulled out some silicone molds. They're actually chocolate molds. I got them in the baking section of Michael's. Nerdy Crafters craft kit comes with some eyeball and gem silicone molds. The gems work especially well as poppets. I didn't want to ruin the mold though. It's just too precious and I wanted to keep it for when I want to use it again, so instead I picked up these chocolate molds. I thought they were cool with the aliens and the spaceships on them, but I found that the circle ones actually pop better, so I'm just going to be using the planets. I cut out a very wonky looking circle, two of them actually, one for the front and one for the back, same as the other two. I cut out little circles for each planet with an X-Acto knife. Again, I made it a really snug fit so they would really stick in there. In order to glue the silicone to the poster, I used silicone adhesive to make sure it's sticks. I've learned nothing sticks to silicone, so I got this special silicone glue to make sure things stick. I just kinda went around each planet with the glue and popped them into their spots. Then I used more silicone glue on the backs of the poppets to glue the back poster on. After that I went around the edges with hot glue to stick the poster papers together. At this point it's looking kinda simple, kinda plain. <sighs> As I've learned from my last poppet video, nothing you do to silicone will make the paint stick to it, so I didn't want to paint on the silicone. There's no point in having 
having the paint just peel off again. Instead, I decided to just paint on the poster itself to add a little something something. So I'm drawing the booger alien in his donut spaceship, and he's back in cookie and donut space. Just in a pop it version. With some blue planets thrown in. Why not? This is really all the booger alien does. He just flies through donut space. There's not a lot to him. Ew. He's just a booger in a donut spaceship flying through donut space. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how these poppets turned out. Poppets aren't that expensive, but this is just a little DIY way to do them with things around the house. Sparkle butt poppets? Whoa. Why have you forsaken us, graveyard loon? Click on the top right or bottom left if you want to see something truly evil. 